Hey friends, this is Dan Burke with SpiritualDirection.com. What would you think about a young man who had suffered tremendously in his life, finding faith and peace and joy and purpose, but whose atheistic parents uh, hindered him, even though he was 18 years old, hindered him from coming, becoming Catholic and getting in his way? That's one scenario. What would you think about uh, you were heading into Mass this coming Sunday and somebody decided that they didn't like you because you're Catholic and they decided they were going to block your way as you headed into the church. They were going to keep you from worshiping God. And most of us would be repulsed by either scenario. But unfortunately, many of us actually do what is essentially something the same or similar every Sunday. How is that possible? Well, unfortunately, because of the loss of reverence in our architecture, in our liturgy, and our catechesis, we've come to treat most sanctuaries or most naves, the main body of the church where we worship, as fellowship halls. And fellowship is a good thing, of course, but we have about a hundred waking hours in a week, approximately, give or take, depending on how much time you sleep, within which we can do a lot of fellowship, accomplish a lot of fellowship. We can go to Bible studies, we can spend time with one another at a coffee shop, we can do a lot of things that are very enriching with one another. But if you consider how much time we actually spend in church, it, it, on, the, on average it boils down to one hour a week maybe, and maybe uh, for mass, and maybe another hour for adoration, possibly. And that's less than 1%, less than 2%, depending on the scenario, of our total waking hours that we spend in that context. Yet how often do we, when in that context, rather than doing uh, the one thing that's most important that Jesus told Martha was most important, and worshiping God, we spend socializing. Worse um, is that we block or inhibit or significantly impair the ability of others to worship because we're spending so much time in chatter and worry and talk about things that are far less important than what we're all there for and that we could easily take care of outside of that context. Frankly, I wouldn't want to be the person, wouldn't want to be those parents, you know, who hindered that child from worship on their day of judgment. I wouldn't want to be the people in mass who are, or in adoration worse, uh, who are not very sensitive to the desire and needs of others to orient their heart and minds to God, and who hinder them from doing so. I wouldn't want to be those folks at judgment. I asked a moral theologian recently if it was a sin, and he said it absolutely is a sin. He said, it's the sin of impiety, which is irreverence which not, not giving proper reverence to, the, to God or the other, others in that circumstance. He said it's uncharitable. So there's no way to slice it where it's okay to come into a worship space that we spend so little time in and impair or get in the way of or distract those who so desperately desire to give their hearts to God. Let's reorient our behaviors to better align with what's really happening in those, pla in those places, whether it be adoration or mass, and ourselves uh, turn our hearts to God and be more attentive in silence to Him in prayer, and also serve others by giving them the room they need to do the same. This is Dan Burke with SpiritualDirection.com. 
Hey friends, if you like this video, please help us to be a blessing to others. Subscribe to our channel, spiritualdirection.com. Share this video. Help us get the word out. God bless.